Hello, my name is Curtis DeGoyer, work as the agronomy lead here at Borgo Industries. Uh, purpose of this video is to give a quick rundown on our 2020 canola trial results. So if you'd like more information, uh, you'll see a banner pop up kind of where I'm speaking in the top right hand corner. Uh, some information, you can download PDFs to all these trials. Uh, or we also have links at the, at the end of the video. We also have a link to our wheat trials and another link to a video that kind of describes how we set up these trials. So if you'd like more information, uh, please, please scroll down below and you'll be able to find that. Otherwise, we'll get going on to this and do a quick recap of, of what we found from 2020 in, in canola. So we had seven different trials on the go this year in canola. We had nitrogen placement, sideband, and mid-row. Uh, we had phosphorus placement in the sideband or the seed row. Uh, we had a low phosphorus rate when we were doing a split application of what was going in the seed row, 15 pounds of P205 or four pounds P205. We also had a potash trial uh, looking at seed row and mid-row band, uh, row spacing 10 inch versus 12, also a 10 inch versus 20 inch row spacing in canola. And then we had a seed rate trial 1.4, 2.8, and 5.6 pounds. So our seeding date for all these trials is on May 19th. Uh, we used an Invigor 345 PC with a TSW or 1,000 seed weight of 5.7 grams. And our seeding rate, uh, unless was for that seeding rate trial, is 5.6 pounds. So we're, we're aiming for that 10 seeds a square foot. Our fertility, uh, base fertility is 140 pounds of N, 50 pounds of P, 10 pounds of K, and sulfur was applied in the fall previous as ammonium sulfate elemental sulfur. So kind of a multi-year sulfur program, but that was done in the fall and expected release this spring. So diving right in, our nitrogen placement, um, I should back up. Basically the way that this is set up is plants per square foot is in the blue bars, uh, yield bushels per acre is in the red bars. We have our, our statistics there. So represented by the letter, if the letter is the same, no statistical difference. If it's a different letter, then there was a difference. And we can say that that was due to the treatment. We have our information down at the bottom where it shows what we did and what uh, drill or opener that we were using. So what we found this year was nitrogen placement. We had a, we had a big difference in, in nitrogen being put down the mid-row band versus being put down in the side band. So we're using the exact same opener. It was a triple shoot where we had a dual knife or a dual shank opener uh, used as the as the seed opener in both of these trials, but then we had the ability to put down mid-row banders and put all the nitrogen down in a mid-row band versus all the nitrogen in a side band. So yield-wise, we actually didn't see any uh, statistical differences across on, on yield between the two, but we did see a big difference when it came to plant stand. And so when that happens, when you have a, a different plant stand in, in canola, uh, it's really evident we can see here in these pictures taken on the same day uh, nitrogen in the mid row was into flowering versus nitrogen in the side band. Lower plant stands, it just took longer. Maturity was considerably later in, in, the, in the side band when nitrogen went down the side band. So then we also had a, a phosphorus placement with this uh, setup where we had the dual knife or the dual shank opener with and without mid row banders. We had the nitrogen going down the mid row or we had nitrogen going down the side band. And we wanted to look at was where is the uptake of phosphorus uh, and did it play a role in the maturity of the canola? And what we found was when we did a, a little bit of a split, we put a little bit in the seed row, a little bit of phosphorus in the seed row, the rest out in the side band and all the nitrogen in the mid row versus just a, the, the call it typical triple shoot system that we have now where we have the seed on its own, phos in the side band and then the nitrogen out in the mid row. Uh, really when nitrogen was in the mid row, it didn't make a big difference um, on anything, maturity, uh, yield, plant stand. When we, move over, when we move over, we lock up the mid rows and we put all the nitrogen in the side band. However, uh, again, it doesn't really show up uh, here as far as uh, any, any differences. But what we did notice is when we did that little bit of a split, just put a little bit of phosphorus in the seed row and the rest of the phos out in the side band, when all the nitrogen was in the side band, we actually saw a big difference when it came to early plant development. So in this picture here, we have uh, actually nitrogens on the sideband on this side. We have our zero P case, we have our control. And then we added phosphorus all into the sideband when all the nitrogen was in the sideband. And you can tell that there's, you know, not a huge difference, but we added just a little bit in the seed row just to get that uptake, that early uptake. We did see 
the canola go into flower a little bit sooner. And it just indicates that there's more of an uptake earlier on uh, of phosphorus in this scenario, where when we put it all in the sideband, it's just tough for the roots to, to get into that immobile phosphorus and, and potash when all the nitrogen's there as well. When it came to putting nitrogen in the mid row, it really didn't matter which, if we put a little bit in the seed row or we just had it all in the sideband. And years previous, we've actually seen a higher plant stand where we didn't put anything in the, in the seed row. But this year we had pretty good moisture. It didn't matter in that, in that case. So we're moving along into our low phosphorus trial. And this one we use just a single knife opener with mid row banders. So uh, on 10 inch spacing, single knife, three quarter inch, and then we had our mid row banders. And what we wanted to look at here is the split application of phosphorus we've seen in years previous, where this has worked very, very well for, for producers, where if they wanna put down more phosphorus, they have the ability to by splitting it in the seed row and in the mid row. So now we're just trying to fine tune how much do we really need in the seed row. So we tried between 15 pounds of P205 or four pounds and no big differences across canola this year, basically in anything. Uh, plant stands went up a bit when we had a lower amount, but uh, this was insignificant. But what was interesting to see is when we had our zero P and we move over here, that 15 P and four P in the seed row, uh, there's actually a diff no difference between the 15 and the four, but there was a difference between those two and the zero P. So what it was kind of showing us was actually that only four P205 in the seed row actually had a bit of a, a bit of an effect, which I would say was a little bit surprising to us. So this is something we're going to continue on into to future years. We had a potash trial. So canola is typically doesn't respond to potash. Uh, we are in an area that has low, lower, uh, potash levels in our soil. It's a great wooded soil in St. Brew here. So we thought, well, maybe there will be a, a response, but uh, we didn't see anything. We were looking at putting potash either in the seed row or the mid row, and we didn't see anything this year. We had good moisture, probably good mineralization, a uh, little bit of uh, potassium release here. Uh, so was no difference this year at all. Then we had some row spacing trials. So 10 inch versus 12 inch. Uh, in this case, it was a single knife uh, with mid row banders on 10 and on 12. And we had both the controls and we read the split. And this year, canola, we didn't see any differences as far as uh, 10 versus 12 uh, in it. When it came to yield or plant stand, uh, there may have been a little bit of a, you know, maybe a day uh, difference in maturity, but, you know, these two pictures taken at the same time. Call this one a little bit more yellow is probably going to flowering a little sooner on 10 inch than on, than on 12 inch. Uh, then we also tried 10 inch and 20 inch spacing uh, on canola being that it's very, very elastic. We wanted to see if there was an opportunity uh, here to see any differences. And again, canola is a pretty amazing thing. So 20 inch on the left, 10 inch on the right, and virtually no differences in, in yield or in plant stem in this case. Uh, should mention on this, we did lower the, the seeding rate down to 2.8 pounds, uh, not the 5.6. So we're actually only putting five, five seeds per square foot down on, on this trial. And again, you can see the bigger differences, but it, it filled in. There's, a, there's you know, quite a few day difference as far as maturity went. Uh, but as far as when it came to yield, plants down, it was actually pretty similar. Canola can really branch out. So we had our seed rate trial. So this one, what we was a little bit different. Uh, well, it was it was it was all set up the same, but we took a few more uh, readings on on this trial. So we had 2.5 seeds, so which is equivalent to about 1.4 pounds seeding rate. Five seeds, which was about 2.8, and then we had our 10 seeds, which is 5.6. So we looked at yield, and amazing enough, if you look at the this blue bar here. That's, we did plant stand at the cotyledon stage. And then the green bar is when we did the harvest stem count. So after it was harvested, we went back in there and just counted stems. And this purple bar here is any stem at that harvest count that was below one eighth of an inch thick. Uh, basically we deemed it not productive. It was there, but you'd only get a few pods off of, off of it. It wasn't really a, a real productive plant. So as you can see, as we increased our seeding rate, um, yield went was the same. We only, you know, we went from 1.9 plants to 6.8 plants, and no differences as far as plants as far as yield went. Uh, 
we did we didn't see any reduction uh, in our counts at the lower seeding rates. When we got up to ten seeds a square foot, that's when we can see a little drop from what we had counted at cod leading down to the stem and just showing there's probably some competition going on. And you can see that as, as we increase our, as our seeding rate went up, so did our unproductive plants uh, as well. So a little bit more competition. So perhaps this was just too high a seeding rate in general, right? Well, in this case, I guess we could have said we went down to two and a half seeds, uh, but there was definitely a maturity difference. We can see at 10 seeds, this was already well into flower. Uh, this strip at five seeds was, you know, a little bit more than the one that two and a half seeds. So just lower plant stand meant longer maturity, which is pretty typical in canola. So again, if you want to check out these in a little bit slower, perhaps, or more in depth, we have PDFs. You can go on our website. You can find them there. Uh, the links are below on this video, or like I said, they'll probably be scrolling up on this screen here somewhere. And if you do have any questions, feel free to contact uh, the Borgo office and ask for uh, myself, Curtis, or other agronomist here, Jeff Strukoff. And you can find our emails. Uh, you can also find us on, on Twitter. So thank you very much for taking the time to, to watch this video. And I hope you migrate over to, to, to the PDFs there. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. So thanks again.